Welcome back to Wolf Guitars and Gear. Today I'm going to be giving you some thoughts on headroom and how it will interact with your guitar tone. So if we're going to be talking about headroom, we need to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about our signal path from the guitar to the speaker. So the first thing we need to look at is the pickup itself. So you're going to have, you know, various different pull pieces that can be a magnet or it can have a magnet that it's connected to. You'll have a bobbin and then in the middle here you'll have thousands of lines of wires. And so you'll have your, your ground wire and you'll have your signal wire. And you know, as we, we know that can be in the form of a single coil or a dual coil humbucker. And what all of this does is it's a giant electromagnet that creates this invisible electromagnetic field right around the top of that, through which you have your guitar strings that as they're plucked, they vibrate, which disturbs the electromagnetic field, creating voltage in direct proportion to how hard that string is vibrating. And also with where you have your hands on the frets determines the frequency of that vibration by adjusting the length of that string. That then comes, like I said, through your signal wire, through your wires, and it goes to the preamp on your amplifier. Okay? And so, again, if we want to know we already we talked about how hard you, you pluck this string is going to make a difference on how strong that signal is sent through here. Okay, so what we're going to be talking about is this right here. The voltage is the current times the resistance. Okay, so the longer that you have a cable running from your guitar to the preamp, the more resistance you're going to have. If you have a single coil, you're going to have less voltage than you would if you had a humbucker, because the humbucker will put out more voltage along this path than to your preamplifier. So when that signal gets to your preamplifier, you're going to be doing tone shaping. We're all familiar, you know, we'll have bass, mid, treble knobs. And that's going to affect the EQ of that. And so, you know, if you have, you know, some bass, you know, this is your, let's just say this is your EQ. And then you're going to have maybe another bump here where you have your mids. And maybe you'll have another bump for your highs, but then it's going to roll off. And maybe your EQ curve looks something along those lines. And as you notice, they're at different levels depending on where you set them. And so therefore, that is going to affect uh, where, what your waveform looks like. And so in the digital age, we're all pretty familiar with what a waveform looks like. How, you know, you start off flat with no signal, and then it starts going up and down and up and down and up and down at different levels again depending on the volume of that waveform okay so we need to think of each of these amplifiers in terms of a tube so if you think or, or a pipe and so if you have a pipe let's say like this and then you're, you're sending your waveform like I said been, been adjusted in your EQ curve like this it goes through and so then you'll have these different peaks and valleys and so then the headroom is this space right here between the highest peak of your waveform and the point at which your amplifier is going to start clipping so if you're familiar with any sort of audio you know that a lot of times clipping is not a desirable thing it causes uh, you know, just weird harmonics and things that you don't want. Especially with today's digital equipment, it's not a good thing. You want to make sure that you have a clean signal to where all these peaks and valleys are intact. 
And now you get that by having enough headroom. However, in a tube amplifier, sometimes it's desirable to have less headroom and to actually hit that clipping barrier. So what would that look like? Okay, so if you took that same thing and you brought the headroom down, or you increase the volume either way to where it's now hitting that, now your waveform is gonna look a lot like this. It's gonna look a lot like this right here where you can see that the peaks and the valleys have been clipped off, they've been cut off, creating distortion or overdrive because the volume again is bigger and more than the headroom of the amp can handle. And again, we're t talking about the preamp section here. And again, when you're talking about the way that you have your EQ curve, that too can affect which frequencies are the ones that are poking above that headroom line there and creating that overdrive. And as I said before, tubes in particular will tend to uh, clip in a way that's very natural and has very nice harmonics. That's why it's you know much more desirable than a lot of the solid state uh, amplifiers that are out there because of the way that it breaks up naturally it just is much more pleasing to the human ear so then your signal comes out of the preamp it might go to your effects send through any pedals that you have over there and then it'll come back to the effects return all right so it comes from the FX return over to the power amp and from the power amp to the speaker a lot of times people put a microphone in front of it either going to recording or to a live sound uh, mixing board and so what we need to understand here is that this here, this power amp, just like the preamp up here, is affected by headroom. So we're still having waveforms go through it. And more than likely, if there's some overdrive or distortion going on from here, where it's being clipped just like this, that signal is then being sent through, hopefully in a higher headroom amp here amplifying that signal loud enough to be going out here and to be heard. The, the preamp is still a rather low level uh, signal at that point when it's going through the preamp and goes through the whole effects loop system and back to the power amp. And so that's important to know that the power amp can be overdriven just like this as well. And so like the classic plexi sounds where people were just diming those things, that's what they were doing. They were driving their power amp into clipping just like this uh, Sun Model T that's what a lot of guys who have that amp that's what they're doing they're pushing that power amp section into clipping uh, another note here that's important to know is in this digital age where uh, modelers are becoming so much more important uh, this whole section right here with the power amp the speaker and the microphone that's what people are referring to when they talk about an IR it's an impulse response it's the response that the microphone would be getting if it was placed in front of a real speaker coming from a real amp. That's what they're talking about is that right there. And then actually your modeling is more or less just this preamp section here with maybe some something to try to emulate that power amp. And so hopefully this information taught you something you didn't know before. Hopefully you understand it a little bit better now. This whole signal path coming from the pickup to the preamp through the, the EQ section through your whatever pedals you have in your effects loop to your power amp to the speaker and then to whatever microphone so if you enjoyed this make sure you leave me a comment and if you have any questions i'll do my best to answer them okay well that's it for today i hope it was informative i hope you learned something i hope you found out something you didn't know um and i hope i explained it well um i'm not an electrical engineer so I may have gotten a couple points, maybe technically inaccurate, but I hope the basic concept is close enough that uh, it can be useful to you and your understanding of guitar tone and how to use your guitar amplifier and how it interacts with your guitar pickups. 
and we're going to be building on this knowledge in the future when we start talking about different types of pedals. Have a great day. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and that you hit the bell so that you get all future episodes. And we'll see you next week here on Wolf Guitars and Gear.